Hello and welcome to the sound of the start of your weekend. The NTT20 betting show sponsored by AK Bets. This is the first betting show proper of the new season, to use some FA Cup terminology. Was so was last week a qualifying round? The fourth qualifying round. Okay. This is the <clears throat> first round proper and there'll be about there'll be about 40 more of these uh, between now and the end of the season. Um I'm Ali Maxwell. George Ellick's with me now and until the earth explodes. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm not going to have the same conversation we had last time you said that. Okay. Uh, last week's picks didn't go that well. We we normally love opening weekend, and in previous years we've made hay during opening weekend. Uh, this time, less so. What's quite amusing is that in the pod last week, my nap was Bristol City draw no bet. And in my first AK Bets column... Mm. The selection I put up in a goal selection was over two and a half goals. Yeah. So for Hull to score in the 94th minute to make it one all. Mm. So your one goal shy of the over two and a half and the Bristol City Journal bet has done in the last minute was a, a double whammy. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, it is worth mentioning that you will be writing a weekly column on the AK Bets website throughout the season. This week's is up. This week's is up already. Mm. And it's not an EFL column, is it? No. Well, it kind of is. Is and it isn't. It's born in the EFL. It's it's kind of it's Ollie Watkins. Made in right. the EFL, but in the Premier League. Okay. Uh and my picks of Luton and Blackpool couldn't have gone any worse, really. Luton lost four one and Blackpool lost two one to Crawley. So I need to put that right uh this week. Uh, as it's the first betting show proper of the season, just want to talk quickly about this show, the betting show in general, and responsible gambling. Uh this show is very strictly for over 18s only. That's the first thing to say. Um, what is the show? For those of you who are new to it, George and I like to bet on the EFL, and we always have. We like to talk to each other about the bets that we're having and why we're having them, and that's what this show is. Uh, it's quite tough to win week-to-week -week EFL betting, but George has had two winning seasons in a row on this show. I've had two losing seasons in a row on this show. The one before that was better, so looking to return to form in that sense. The, the important thing is that George and I both understand the risks that come with betting. We never bet more than we can afford to lose. We don't chase our losses. We're sensible and we're disciplined with our staking. And, and that's why we set ourselves this weekly structure. It'll be a nap, which is a two-point play, a next best, one-point play, a goal scorer pick, a long shot, and then a BTTS six-fold uh, to finish us off, with both of us putting three picks in each. We set ourselves that structure to help us regulate our staking and also to have a nice range of picks as well. The idea behind talking about the picks and justifying them is not to say everyone quit, go and lump on this selection. We want you to apply your own consideration and thought, of course. And we ask that you are gamble aware, recognize the risks that come with betting and make sure that if you think you're having a problem with betting, please speak to someone about it, whether that is someone you know and trust or the many excellent professional resources available, most notably, BeGambleAware.org. Pretty excited for this season's betting show, if I'm honest, George. Um, we love it. We know many of you do too. But it is important that we avoid the pitfalls and risks that come with betting. So we will continue to hammer home the message of responsible gambling. So for the first <coughs> betting show proper nap of the season, George Addict, two-point play on who? Bradford to beat Salford at 8 to 11 with AK Bets is my selection for this one. Um... I was kind of expecting Salford to put last season behind them and again be a side challenging the top seven. And that might still happen, but there are a pretty significant warning signs that have come about in their two games so far. Now, I'll caveat this to an extent because you've got to be consistent season on season where I think it's foolish to put too much value in Carabao Cup games, especially in the first round. I kind of think they're glorified friendlies. I kind of think for a lot of teams, they probably look at it being like, we're going to rotate. Of course, we want to win. But like, if we lose, is it the biggest issue? Because then, you know, there's no fixed congestion going forward. But in both the Salford's games, they played two of the best teams. Two teams, I assume, are going to finish in the top seven at home in Port Vale and Doncaster. And they've lost both 2-0. They haven't created a great deal in either game. And they had a lot of shots in midweek against Donny. But... The majority of, the, of those came from set pieces. In both games, they've kind of clicked in, or kicked into gear to an extent when they've been behind. But in both games at nil-nil, they've been absolutely desperate, which is a massive concern to me as well. And, you know, they, they're yet to score a goal. It, it feels like they haven't left last season behind at all thus far. 
and looking at their you know their to, to have lost their their first two games of the season two 0 at home is not the start that they wanted to get off to and they're going away to a Bradford side who have started the season in in much better form you know you look at their game so far in particular on opening day where they went to MK Dons and they um, scored two very early goals and won the game 2-1 and were able to see it out albeit MK had chances it wasn't like it was a a real onslaught and to go and get a result there on opening day was was particularly impressive they lost on penalty to Grimmersby in midweek but again from an attacking point of view they created absolutely loads the big kind of issue sometimes of backing Bradford in recent times has been their record at Valley Parade has been, for whatever reason, absolutely terrible for so long. To an extent where it's felt like they've really struggled to perform in front of their own fans. Maybe the, the burden of expectation has played a part in that. But if you look at their last three games of last season at home, off the back of three consecutive defeats against Forest Green, who were relegated, they lost 2-0. They were, they were then beaten uh, at the end of March 5-1 by Bansfield, 3-0 by Notts County. But they finished the season beating Tranmere, Gillingham and Newport 2-0, 1-0 and 4-1. So they come here off the back of three consecutive home wins, which I think is significant in itself because there is that kind of monkey off the back to an extent of them being able to do that. They have been impressive in the first two games so far this season. I like the recruitment over the course of the summer. It feels like they're very settled with Graham Alexander as their manager right now. And, you know, this to me looks like a, a another team that Salford are playing who are going to be towards the top end of the table this time away from home and I don't see why Salford should really cause them too many issues so yes it is short at 8 to 11 it may have been 4 to 5 when I was doing my research yesterday and it's been it's coming a little bit um, but I think this is one of those where Bradford I think there's a, a, a long distance a long way between the two right now and I anticipate Bradford should get 6 points in their first two games yeah my nap's in League 2 as well it's a team that lost to Bradford on opening day MK Dons, I'm backing them to beat Colchester. AK bets at 13 to 10 as we record, which is joint best price. This one's at Colu. Um, MK lost to Bradford. They were 2 0 down after five minutes and they'd only faced one shot. Riddle me that. Um, oh. A screamer from, from Alex Patterson from range, followed by a sliced clearance from the defender Sharing, which went inside the near post. Uh, th- the most disastrous start to the season they could have had. The way they responded was pretty good, I feel like, from that point, as you would expect. Uh, They dominated the ball, and they did create a lot of opportunities for themselves, um, only taking one of them. I'm not worried about MK's defeat on opening day. That's not enough for me to downgrade them from what I consider to be a top three team in the league as I expect it right now so the first thing to say is I'm not that worried about MK I like the 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 work that they did over the summer it's a completely new look back five if you include the keeper the back three of sharing Tucker and Lawrence and then the defensive midfield of of Offord and Liam Kelly Um, I like what they've done there to freshen things up and I'm not that worried about them overall they did lose 5-0 to Watford in the Carabao Cup I'm Obviously, it suits me to say this. I'm just not fussed about that at all. I don't think that's offering a huge amount of signal. There were only three outfield players that started um, on opening day and then started in midweek. So I think it'll be um, heavily rotated. And this is as much about Colchester, who I was excited about pre-season. Then I saw them live against Wimbledon last week, and I was fairly unimpressed. They were also uh, two goals to the good like Bradford were after nine minutes, both from set pieces. Jack Payne's delivery is deadly. And Ben Goodliffe scored two brilliant headers. However, uh, while that threat will remain, Goodliffe got injured and he'll be missing this game for sure. Uh, So they'll lose his threat in the air in, in uh, in the attacking box. And huge concerns about their defensive shape and really just about the personnel and the personnel fit for a Cowley style of play a Cowley defensive organization they play four at the four at the back and Wimbledon's wingbacks had a real real good afternoon they were always uh, free at the, uh, on the other side of the pitch to receive crossfield balls and with uh, MK Dons also playing with wingbacks I think that could be the case again here so I would expect Aaron Nemain and or Joe Tomlinson to have quite a big impact going forward for MK but then just in midfield like when I think of a Cowley team I expect ball winners I expect athleticism but in Arthur Reed and Jack Payne and Tom Hopper, they had three players playing in midfield, none of whom offer much athleticism, certainly. None of them offer much 
ball winning capability and then they just didn't screen the defense very well there at the top of the pitch they didn't quite get it right either they played the two youngsters Tavide and Ian Veen uh, with Gordon off the right and it just didn't really work so while I think they will probably still be a set piece threat something that MK Dons need to improve on from last season uh, overall I think MK will be able to impose themselves on this game even though it's at Colchester they've had the pitch relayed over the summer Cole U after their issues with drainage last season and I think that plays into MK's hands because it'll be one of the nicer pitches around at the moment that's what they need to play their nice possession play so not worried about MK's opening day defeat was quite worried about Colchester's opening day defeat that leads me to back MK Dons at 13 to 10 exciting I, I think so. Mm. I think so. A couple of <clears throat> League Two naps. Um, George, AK Betts have... It's been quite a fun start to the partnership. We've had some good feedback from people uh, enjoying the uh, trader chat, as you said that they would. Um, and we're very fortunate that the guys at AK Betts are able to put all of our selections from the show up very easily for people to find. Mm. Football specials. And there they will be at the very top. There you um, go. And the, the offer code as well has, has gone to good use. Yes. Uh, for anyone looking to sign up to a for AK Bets for a new account, you can use the promo code NTT100. The link is in the, des- in the description of this, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to it uh, on whatever podcast app that you use. If your first bet is an accumulator on football with a minimum of four selections, AK Bets will boost the profit gained on that initial bet by 25% in the form of a free bet up to a value of £100. T's and C's accessible on the website and do apply. And Ali, someone has already reaped the rewards of that, haven't they? Yeah, Connor uh, sent us a DM on Instagram to say that uh, having signed up with the offer code, uh, he then won a fourfold on opening weekend. I kind of wish that I was as good as uh, as Connor at picking opening day winners. Uh, he won a fourfold for 212 quid uh, and was boosted with £52 worth of free bets. So that is... The uh, offer code NTT100 for AK Bets. New customers, T's and C's do apply there. What's your next best? My next best, people will be surprised to hear. It relates to Oxford. Um, <laughs> relates to Oxford. That's an incredible euphemism for I'm picking Oxford to win. Oxford to win for, <laughs> uh, for, uh, at uh, 9 to 2. So, best price. This is the issue with this is I, I put this up at 4 to 1 message the lads at AK saying this is my selection and they replied saying we're boosting it out to the best price in the whole market at 9 to 2 <laughs> sorry George which doesn't fill me with, with much faith <laughs> that's amazing they can that these guys know uh, fan bias when they see it yeah. and they want to make the most and of a it. week ago I was when we were doing our 124s I had, I had Coventry 4th and I had Oxford 21st now here I am all change please almost like I'm reacting too much to one game I just think there is you know I, I still think this is going to be a very difficult season for Oxford and I still think staying up will be a, 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 a very strong achievement from Des Buckingham and his side but we've seen it before like I remember with Charlton and Lee Bowyer when they came up sometimes a side can carry form into a new season and I think Oxford are probably going to amass a lot of their points this campaign now because they are playing incredibly well there is a massive buy-in I think from everyone at the club into what Des Buckingham is doing he has a really good grip on this group of players to the extent that they brought in 11 new players over the summer and yet he only brought two of them in for the first game. Massively rotated midweek and they put another good performance beating Peterborough with ease. Things, you know, fatigue will come in, getting beaten will not confidence but right now I think Oxford are in a really, really good spot to go to a Coventry side who are without Ben Sheaf uh, who is still out through injury without Cal- uh, Callum O'Hare after he left the club last season, who haven't quite seemed to shake off the malaise from the back end of last season. I was surprised to see, you know, having put them up, John O'Bet last time out, I had a, a, a kind of a big eye on their on their game at Stoke and Stoke with, with a better side, especially in the first half. And Coventry were, were kind of struggled to get out of, um, you know, they, were, they struggled to look their best. And we know that when they're at their best, they are such a good free-flowing attacking side. And then again in midweek, against Bristol City again the Carabao Cup you kind of draw a bit of a line through it but they went to Bristol City they won but they were by no means convincing they didn't put that, that opening day performance to, to to one side so it feels like it's in, in a similar way to it being a good time for Oxford to play Norwich I think this is maybe a good time for Oxford to travel to, to Coventry um, seem to be relishing playing on the big stage at the moment another game this is I think Oxford's 
Sports' uh, fifth consecutive game live on Sky Sports, which must be a club record. Wow. Pretty fun. Um, although I suppose everyone's now kind of on Sky, but this is the the, the game taking on the, the Manchester United against uh, Fulham game on Friday night. Um, Cameron Brannigan playing a more advanced role. Will Volks has come in and is sitting in the, at the base of midfield. I think Volks will be a huge signing in order to get the best out of Brannigan, uh, who was very good at the back end of last season, but had to play much deeper to where he would want to play, I think, in the formation and the system that Buckingham's playing now. Brannigan's playing a little bit further forward, but not as far forward as a 10 where you're going to get on, uh, going to get in positions which I think would be of detriment to him. Facing forward is the way that he wants to be playing and that and that's the way he'll look here. Matt Phillips looked really good for, for, for 45 minutes in midweek. Wouldn't surprise me at all if he came in for Plachette on the left-hand side here. And I think if Oxford put in a, a performance of the, of the same level they did against Norwich on opening day, they might catch Coventry a little bit cold here. And, and at 9-2, to I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah, uh, my next best relates to Middlesbrough in that it's uh, Middlesbrough to win. Um, and it's Middlesbrough to win at 11-10. to 10. They are away at Derby County this weekend. Really encouraged by Borough's start to the season. Uh, the last two campaigns, they started super slowly. They looked like they were getting to know each other. Some of the players looked like they were getting up to speed with the level. And the way it manifested itself in particular was inability to finish chances and sloppy at the back. Um, but we sit here, they won 1-0 against Swansea on opening day. The better side, for sure, the comfortable winners, albeit the goal came from the penalty spot. Um, so, you, you know, that the finishing of the chances could still improve, for sure. But all the things you wanted to see, you saw. Looking much more solid defensively, restricting Swansea to barely any opportunities. That defence, if it can improve a lot on last season, is going to go a long way to having Borough at least in the top six, if not higher. Um, the midfield looks good. Aidan Morris has slotted in really nicely, having signed from Columbus Crew in MLS. Um, that's you know that's their marquee signing of the summer, and it instantly looks like a real success. And at the top of the pitch, they've been fluid, uh, aggressive, uh, skillful, creative. Uh, and in midweek against Leeds, they went to Allen Road and they scored three goals in the second half. Uh, real sort of confidence boosters for Bergzorg, for Coburn. You could even say for Dykesteel, who scored his first ever goal for Borough in five years at the club, because he's been kind of somewhat maligned by Borough fans. He's never performed particularly well for Borough, but just to have him now looking quite good, uh, challenging Luke Ayling for that right back spot, everything looks great, to be quite honest, for Borough. I'm not as encouraged with Derby County and, and in particular their display on opening night against Blackburn where they lost 4-2. Um, the main concerns being seeming lack of ability to create chances from open play with both of their goals coming from set pieces and then the overall reaction and temperament when they went behind where they went so over the top in chasing the game that they left themselves completely exposed and Blackburn completely sliced them open and, and, and went on and scored four. I don't think Borough is a good opposition to be coming to Pride Park if they are still working out how to play if they go behind. I expect Borough to be the better side here pretty comfortably and I would be confident that if, if they do go ahead and if Derby do leave them spaces to play into, well, like they did on Wednesday night against Leeds, I think the attackers that they have can really make hay and they've got good options off the bench as well. So very pro-Borough at the moment. Isaiah Jones looks absolutely electric right now. Um, Latilath looks absolutely electric right now. The main concerns would be like Derby back at the level, great home atmosphere at Pride Park, but they've just been to Allen Road and won 3-0, so I'm not that worried about their, their temperament borough right now. Um, and obviously Derby's set piece threat as well. So early days, but right now I kind of would, I see this as a top four championship team against a, easily a bottom four championship team. Uh, so I like the price of 11 to 10 for my next best. Goal scorer? Who's going to score a goal? <laughs> um, my bit goal... rusty. Uh, bit rusty with my, uh, with my links, with my segues. That wasn't a great segue. Uh, we'll my goal scorer is Anthony Masaba, oh, nice. <clears throat> who is 5-1 to one to score any time uh, for Sheffield Wednesday. They are travelling to Sunderland on a Sunday. Sunderland, who got off to a really good start this season, who won 2-0 on opening day at Cardiff. The, 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 the quality of that form line, we will see. Um, I still have big concerns about um, the Le Breeze, Lorient side and their own underlying numbers. What? I just like you've got concerns about Le Breeze, Lorient side. It yeah. just, it, I know what you mean. 
it makes it sound like you're still worried about them. I still am. Having only just found out about them like, last week. I'm, but I'm still concerned. How are no, they... just, you know, you look back at the manager's tenure at other clubs and the big thread, I mean, there were positive threads on it as well, but the big thread from his time there was that their, their defensive numbers were, were, were kind of abhorrent. So yeah. I'm expecting that even if he's a success there, that they are going to concede chances and concede goals. Um, Sheffield Wednesday put in the performance of the weekend when beating uh, Plymouth Argyle 4-0. They created chances basically at will. Danny Rowell um, has them drilled very well and I'd be amazed. I think Sunderland are very short price here at, f- at kind of 5-4 to four to win the game. Um, and I'd be very surprised if Sheffield Wednesday weren't able to create a fair few chances. Masaba scored seven goals last season um, and he had five shots against Argyle. Uh, came close a couple of times, played off the left-hand side, played 90 minutes, was incredibly lively. One of the... Whoever was on co-coms, I've watched so Don. many... Yeah, I've watched so many games, I'm forgetting the specifics, was getting really wound up at how uh, he wasn't attacking the far post as much in the manner that Dom wanted him to. Yeah. And then for the opening goal, which was tapped in by Jamal Lowe, there was Masaba right, right behind, behind him, ready to tap it in. And also, what's interesting is if you have a look at his shot maps from last season, even though he's a wide player, played off the right hand off the left last season, his shots come from between the posts. Like he's someone who doesn't necessarily attack the far post. He drifts inside and looks to get, get on the end of, um, of shots within between the two posts. I think he's one of those players that could easily just start scoring really regularly. And, and if he does do that, um, prices like the five to one that we're getting about him to score here will be um, long, long gone. So, yeah, a player that I'm willing to side with for a team who I think are going to create loads. And, and as is always the case, I think with these goal scorer markets, often, you know, when you find a team who you anticipate are going to create a lot of chances, who are quite a big price to win the game, it no- normally boosts out those who um, who you fancy to score. Yeah, similar-ish theme for my goal scorer picks. Anis Mameti of Bristol City. Uh, he is at four to one. Uh, with AK bets to score any time. That is the, the joint best price out there. I, I would I would put him in a bit of a box with Masaba as like really lively wide forwards who don't always actually convince when it comes to being like stone cold killers <laughs> in terms of shooting, but who get involved a lot inside the box and are likely to have opportunities in any game because of, of their very nature. Mimeti is just a high volume guy a 1v1 merchant quite a selfish player doesn't lift his head up much gets the ball on the left of bristol city's attack runs at his fullback cuts inside and shoots his shot locations are not as nice as anthony masaba but his shot volume is highly notable and and is basically why i'm picking him he had six shots last week away at hull on opening day which is very very eye-catching they weren't all shots from range either he had four shots inside the box of which one was inside the six-yard box and then two from kind of 20 yards. So these aren't like Alessandro Diamanti. Why is he still my reference point for, <laughs> for 35-yard so shots? Random. I've got to update that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think at the moment with um, summer signing Yu Hirakawa not yet available, it's still Anis Mometi and Sam Bell off the left. And clearly, clearly Manning prefers Mometi. He likes having a 1v1 dribbler because they don't really have that anywhere else on the pitch. So... In a game at home to Millwall where I'm expecting Mil- um, Bristol City to have a lot of the ball, I think a lot of the time it's going to end up at the feet of Mometi facing up a, a set defence and I think he's going to have licence to get shots off. He- his shooting is pretty hit and miss in terms of his accuracy, but he can go both ways. He's got a decent, powerful shot on- off both feet and um, I like the 4-1 to one price here. I think Bristol City, who are favourites for the game, should have plenty of shots. And clearly, I think Mometi will be taking many of them. So Anis Mometi and Anthony Masaba are two goal scorer picks. Where are you going for a long shot? Alessandro Diamanti? Both, both AMs. Both Ws? LWs? No, as in initials. Oh, initials. Yeah. I thought you were saying attacking midfield. AM. And ironically, Anthony Masaba kicking off just as the strike as the clock goes to PM. Midday. Brilliant. Monday. Thank you. God, what a brain you are. What a segue that is. What's your long shot? Into Blackburn. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Blackburn go to Norwich, and I think Norwich are so short to win this. They're like <laughs> they're like even money twenty one to twenty, um, twenty one to twenty with AK bets to win the game, and I I cannot see why they're that price apart from just way too much like pre season ratings being being put into this. Norwich have been shocking in their first two games this season. Um, they. Uh, Against Oxford, were incredibly poor. 
and they lost the game 2-0 as we've already discussed they then played Stevenage at home in midweek and, and lost the, and, and won that game 4-3 against a, a league one Stevenage side that I'm fairly concerned about the um, John Rowe situation has not been resolved there are issues uh, massive issues in terms of the, the, the personnel at the moment if they line up with Duffy and Hanley again I think Blackburn will feel very very confident they can hurt them um, there's a real lack of quality in forward areas, I would argue, too. Still talk about Abu Kamara, who we really hope might have a bit of a breakout year, is seemingly um, on his way to... Well, there, there are a lot of bids in from I think Celtic at the latest now. Doesn't fancy him. I know. The new manager. N- he's not buying what Abu Kamara is selling. A- and even though I've seen our friends at Tottenham Norwich City say there were signs in midweek against Stevenage about what um, the new manager is going to bring. Like, this is... It's a home game against the League One side, who... You know, this is going to be a different test. And Blackburn, on the other hand, have started the season incredibly well, um, like way better than I think most people anticipated. They were absolutely brilliant in their 4 2 win over Derby on Friday. And yet, Stockport played the kids and they went there and they beat them 6 1. But that can't really be a bad thing, especially when you're getting Yuki Hashi scoring his second goal in two games, Maktar Gay, then you striker, getting his first goal for the club, Andy Vyman uh, scoring 2 and 2 now, Will Smodic's be leaving while well, he started that game um, and there's a fair chance he's going to play in this one too because as it stands right now you know, there seems like them and, and Ipswich are still quite far apart in their valuation so you know Blackburn have started the season really well I fancy well they will certainly fancy their chances going to Norwich it's a great time to play against them I think Blackburn from a defensive standpoint under Eustace should be pretty good you know, important to remember that Derby only scored two goals from set pieces and an open play didn't really cause them too many issues. I don't think Norwich will cause them too many issues. They've scored 10 goals in their first two games. Mm. So I, I'm back in minus one at seven to one. Rovers minus one at seven to one. Uh, basically, the thinking being that they could either win it to nil fairly comfortably or it could transpire similar to their other two games where they've gone out and they've been absolutely dominant from an attacking standpoint. So You know something that springs to mind that really has no bearing on this but is, I think, what would be called availability bias on my uh, on my front is that in the game between Norwich and Blackburn at Carrow Road last season yeah was where Norwich were having that horrendous start yeah and all was not well there and Blackburn went there yeah and ran all over them and beat them 3-1 yes Dolan and Smodic scoring in the first 15 minutes and Carrow Road turning big time mm. um, so albeit Two different managers and quite a lot of players that weren't playing in that game. Yeah, yeah. It makes me love it. Makes me love it even yeah. more. Uh, my long shot is a CB goal scorer. That is where I am happiest. Uh, that is where I would like to be focusing my long shot energy uh, to start this season. I do have a problem though, and that is I want to back a Port Vale centre back to score. Uh, vale scored. Two goals from set pieces against Salford last Saturday. They were both scored by the midfielder Garrity, but very clear watching them that it's the Giants, Connor Hall and Ben Hennigan, who are the main goal threats from those set pieces. The problem I have is which one to make my pick. They're the same price. Um, They are both centre-backs. They are both very, very tall. So you'd think, okay, um, they've both had about a decade's worth of football so far. So let's look at their goal-scoring record. Both of them, 0.05 goals per 90. Not ideal. Um, Shots in their whole career, 0.77 shots per 90 plays 0.76 shots per 90. (laughs) Not ideal. So I thought, let's watch some tape. Went on Scout. Bit of tape. Watched all of Port Vale's corners. Was it tape? As in, did he actually buy the video? Studied the tape. Yeah. Went down Blockbuster. Yeah. Port Vale Sulphur, please, boss. He said, yeah, I thought it might be. Um, Corners, is it? I said, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Watched all the corners. Very basic level, just wanted to know who is closer to the goal when the when the corner is swung in. Yeah. Um, in the first half, it was Hall. In the second half, it was Hennigan. Okay. They, they switched it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this has become a nightmare for me. Um, and it reminds me a little bit of the choice that I was faced when we were in um, Hammersmith King Street Food Market about an hour ago. And I couldn't decide <laughs> between the duck wrap and the Venezuelan arepa. Um, and, and so what you decided to do was just send me... Just to, without any context, just a, an emoji of a duck. Right. Which, just to be safe, I then ducked in case you yeah. were giving me a warning and everyone looked at me like I was weird. Connor Hall and Ben Hennigan. The, the, the stat that swung it is that goals per shot in their career, conversion rate. 
Hennigan wins by 0.06 to 0.05. Shots on target per 90, 0.24 to 0.19. And goals per shot on target, 0.23 to 0.20. So couldn't choose between them. We've gone with Ben Hennigan. He's 14 to 1 to score for Port Vale from a set piece this weekend against Tranmere uh, with AK Bets. That's the joint best price available as we record. Ben Hennigan, anytime. Which takes us to our old friend. The old, the collaboration piece. BTTS sixfold, we both put forward three. Mm-hmm. We won two. Was last only season. two? Maybe two and a. Do we get a fourer and on a cut week? Maybe. Maybe a four. Someone out there will know. Someone will know. LR Beatro will know. Um, take me through your three picks. For... We, sh- we should also say that these are sixfold this week was I think twenty three and a half or twenty three to one, and AK bets have boosted it to twenty five to one, and you can find it on site. Um, I'm going to kick off with Pompey against Luton. Um, anyone who saw Luton's game against Burnley I think will understand this selection I think anyone who saw Pompey's game against Leeds will understand the selection both games incredibly open uh, Rob Edwards playing a really young side on opening day against Burnley who defensively looked pretty shaky from an attacking standpoint it's okay obviously this will be a should be a, an easier test in terms of breaking down the opposition Pompey conceded loads of opportunities against Leeds uh, albeit managed to score three goals themselves um, this looks to me to be a a pretty goal heavy game um, in league one Wickham against Birmingham Wickham with a 3-1 to one opening day we're, having gone behind we're very good against Wrexham and created loads of opportunities within that game uh, generally I think Birmingham will be a side to get with with goals um, for the most part I think we know that Chris Davis is going to play a pretty attacking brand of football but also as we saw in the, especially in the first half on uh, Saturday was that Reading were able to create quite a few chances against them and I think Wickham at home will fancy their chances of doing so as well and finally Grimsby against Cheltenham uh, David Artel's Grimsby I think will develop into a, go- a into a team where we see plenty of goals hasn't necessarily been the case so far but this is their first home league game and in the Carabao Cup in midweek they create, they conceded loads of opportunities against Bradford uh, and Cheltenham's first game a crazy 3-2 win against Newport where it looks like they're going to be a, a, an ultra-attacking side. And if they take the game to Grimsby, it should be uh, an entertaining one. So one from each league. Uh, Pompey, Luton, Wickham, Birmingham, Grimsby, Cheltenham, BTTS, yes. Yeah, nice. i got two in the championship. Uh, the first one is Argyle against Hull. Just think there's going to be a lot of space all over the pitch here. These are two teams who uh, are not, from what we've seen so far, in great shape defensively. Um, and who both want to spread the pitch wide in attack uh, in order to get their wide attackers on the ball. Um, And so I just think a game where I expect both teams to have spells and opportunities, um, Argyle versus Hull. Also, if you saw Hull play in the Carabao Cup in midweek, some of the shenanigans going on when trying to build up from the back with their goalkeeper makes me think that they they might gift Argyle a few opportunities um, trying to sort of perfect their uh, build up under Tim Walter. Uh, Norwich Blackburn, you've already talked about this game. Um, Blackburn Rovers looking like a pretty fluid attack at the moment. Eustace is known as a defence first manager, but uh, with the players that he has at his disposal, in in particular the the options that he's had off the bench so far, um, I kind of back them to always maintain a threat, particularly on the break. With people like Dolan up front as well, you know, the fact that Norwich haven't looked very good playing out from the back so far. With a manager like Eustace, who I think can set up a team really well out of possession, and players like Dolan, um, who I think are pretty good in the press, I think opportunities for, for Rovers. But I do think um, Norwich, I'd certainly take all of your concerns, but I would expect them at home um, to have more opportunities than they did uh, up at Oxford uh, last week. Scored four in midweek against Stevenage, obviously. So they can do it. Uh, BTTS Norwich Blackburn and the last one is is Cambridge against Crawley I just feel like Crawley games are going to be high scoring it doesn't look like they are moving up to League One and suddenly shutting up shop and trying to grind out results that is not the Scott Lindsay way Uh, it's better for his reputation anyway if they continue to play kind of quite exciting and expansive football uh, and that's the the squad that they've recruited as well so I think all Crawley games are worth a look for big TTS um I don't think they'll be overawed by uh, this Cambridge side who didn't score up at Stockport, um, but who had a a couple of half chances. And with Lavery and Kaika up front, you've got decent speed, decent finishing ability if they do find holes in the Crawley defence. So uh, Cambridge and Crawley are my three. So 25 to 1, it's been boosted to on the AK Bets website. You can find it in the football section and then the specials 
category uh, and it is Portsmouth and Luton, Norwich and Blackburn, Plymouth and Hull in the championship. It's Wickham and Birmingham in League One, Grimsby, Cheltenham uh, in League Two and Cambridge and Crawley also in League One. That's a bit of fun. Yeah. Getting back up to speed. Um, can you recap your selections for me? Yeah, my nap is Bradford 8-11. to 11. Uh, They are home to Salford. Oxford 9-2 to two, to go to Coventry and win on Friday night is my next best. Blackburn minus one at 7-1 to one is my long shot. My goal scorer is Anthony Masaba. 5-1 to one anytime at the Stadium of Light. Uh, nap for me, MK Dons to beat Colu at 13-10. to 10. Middlesbrough to beat Derby next best, 11-10. to 10. My goal scorer is Anis Mameti. At four to one, uh, my long shot is a Ben Hennigan goal. He's a Port Vale centre back at fourteen to one, and the BTTS sixfold: Norwich, Blackburn, Plymouth, Hull, Portsmouth, Luton, Cambridge, Crawley, Wickham, Birmingham, Grimsby, Cheltenham, twenty-five to one on the AK Bets site. Uh, thank you very much to AK Bets for sponsoring the betting show all season long, and thanks to you for getting on board uh, for this first betting show proper of the season. Stay with us throughout for. EFL betting picks and thank you very much for listening and go well.